Hello guys and welcome back to Anything Goes with Sanaya and Leah. We are here today with episode 20, which is a fifth away from 100. <laughs> so very nice. <precise. laughs> <laughs> but we are here today um, and we did put some question boxes up. I actually did have to message Leah to uh, remind her to do the question box Great. yesterday. Um, otherwise, this would have been a very different podcast because I only oh, got a question. Yeah, well, I put one of those um, unnamed ones because I don't... Did you put one of those up or did you just put a normal You know one? what? I have opted to not put one up there anymore purely based off the fact some people are really mean like yeah, some people are really are. mean, and I just don't want to open myself up to people having to make comments about me or anything like that. Because like, even though even though there would only be like one or two every time I put one up, I'm yeah. just thinking to myself, why am I why am I opening myself up to people just like trying to bully me off the internet? Like you can all yeah. go for yourselves. Like if you want to say something to me, put it on put put your name on it. Like there's no point in you being worried. Like do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I did put, I think that's why I got more because obviously I put that um, NGL link yeah. one up, which got a lot more than the normal one. It's so bad yeah, that people are scared to ask certain questions. Like there'll be some questions I'm like, you could have just put that on the normal question box. Like, I'm not going to do them are, like normal questions, aren't they? Yeah. Like, and at the end of the day, like the only time I'm going to judge you is if you're being fucking rude to me and I can see your yeah. Instagram. Any other time, no questions, a silly question. I tell my, all my clients this, like, if you genuinely don't know, don't be worried to ask because yeah, otherwise you're yeah. just never going to know. Yeah, definitely. But I think, yeah, I, I just, I like putting the NGL one up because then I think yeah, people, people just feel a bit more open to like ask things, don't they, that maybe they wouldn't normally yeah. ask. Maybe I'll but, do it for the podcast. But Yeah, we've got quite a few though, so I'm excited for this one. There's, there's quite a, like a broad range of topics as well, so it should be quite good. Um, yeah. But first, let's just quickly round up on your launch thing. <laughs> Oh my god, guys! Yeah, so you know those little hints that we were talking about. You know, like little little launch going on. Mm -hmm. Leah's known for about you. When did I start talking about it? Like January, February. Ages, yeah, maybe like months ago now. Yeah, months ago, um, Leah's known about it for a while. Um, but it's out now. We have SFP is no more. Limitless flow posing is now out there. I'm LFP. LFP I love it do you know why because I feel like people know me because of brand recognition quite a lot and I really wanted to keep like brand recognition there because I've already built up such a community yeah. with SFP so I was like I feel like I can't get away from the FP I, I feel yeah, like it flows really nice this is it I was like FP. I, yeah I can't get rid of it I was like I just love it yeah so, yeah going through names and names and everything I just hated I was like just couldn't think of what it took me about three months to actually figure out a name for it and then I also wanted the logo to be similar but different yeah so this look the logos are very similar but different um and then I changed it to pink so it's all yeah good. I like that like I was so excited because I was like because originally I wanted it red because Tom Haynes wanted me to also help men like his boys yeah and then I started doing it and I was like I just don't like it yeah, I don't you want to do what you want to do yeah I was like I don't want to work with men so I thought red would be a good <laughs> I'm like Pink, love it females only site fuck off boys <laughs> that's like me like tried to coach guys for like a bit and I was like nope can't do this not for me just don't like it. I just don't have a passion for it like you're all you come into my studio you're sweaty you're wet you're in your pants I feel a little bit uncomfortable not because of you but just because you're a very big bloke I'd rather not just give me my women <laughs> yeah same that's like me as well <laughs> oh so do we like a little brief summary of like what it is what it includes so it is anything and everything you would need for female bodybuilding so it is obviously linked mainly at the moment to posing however my aim is to advance it to like for example Leah's doing like Q&A's live Q&A's for the education so you get like so hold on let me backtrack there are loads of different options that you can get so we've got the community and membership site so within the community and membership site it's £5.99 per month um, and with that, you get a video library of loads of things, all things stage, all things female bodybuilding, posing, you name it, there will be a video on it. Um, at the moment, I think there's like 12 videos on there. So plenty of videos for you to get started with. 
within that um, community membership site, we have like something like similar to Facebook. You can create your profile. You can connect with people. You can make group chats. You can message people via the site. You can post, comment, share your photos, share your prep updates, share your off season updates. Um, and you and what happens is you have your own timeline with the friends you've connected with, or you have the proper community site where everyone who is part of the LFP site can just add and post and you can see everything. Um, and that's just a really way to kind of branch out and really kind of create like a forum place just for people to feel a bit safe, you know, feel part of a community really kind of know that no one in that site is there to judge them so that any comment or question that they have about female bodybuilding you can ask without feeling any type of judgment I have people on the site such as Leah such as Time to Shine Bikinis um, I have Emma Curvin who's an online coach and I have some people who are in a prep as well all on that site so all bases are covered in the sense where if you ask a question there's going to be someone on that site who potentially can answer the question for you if needed. Um, but within that also, you get on weekly online posing tutorials. So let's say, for example, you want to learn how to pose, but you can't really, you don't really want to start a posing session yet, or you can't afford to. The site at each week will basically send a uh, give you a video of learning. Let's say week one is a front pose. Then once you've, once seven days are gone, you then learn your back pose. And then yeah. after that, each week and lock so you get online posing tutorials you get two times per month weekly live education which Leah is actually one of our first guests of course yeah. um and then we obviously have like the monthly membership packages this is where it's like a cheap option for everyone but you see me every month so a bit like online coaching um but each package has something else involved whether you get a community site pose and check-in or posing session and then we just have like one-off sessions and stuff so the main thing is the community site and then obviously if you want to get posing with me but I knew there was nothing really out there where like with my posing as well it's so community-based I wanted it was all via whatsapp and I'm not gonna lie even though I love my girls I'm really not a fan of like messages at 11 p.m or you know things being missed because yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone's there was like 200 women in there so I was like, this needs to, this needs to go. Yeah. You know what I've actually just done on my WhatsApp? I've actually just put contact hours on my work. Cause I have a work phone, right? So I have a work yeah. phone and a personal phone. I've just put um contact hours on my WhatsApp work phone. So people can now see, and I've specifically put like, don't message me outside of the work hours. Yeah. I mean, they're long work hours. They're like 6am to 8pm Monday to Friday. And then I think Saturdays till like, 5 p.m. and then Sundays are off but it just it gives me a day off when no one messages me where I know I can just leave my phone and then it also means I'm not getting messages a half an hour at night because I'm sure you're the same I'm the type of person if I get a message and I'm sat in my phone next to me and it's 10 o'clock I'm gonna answer that message yeah um, and I'm like I've um, got I can't leave it if I know it's there so I'm like if people don't message me I'm, I, and I'm not on my phone it's like you want to give that so you uh, anything's immediate attempt like yeah. anything's urgent when it comes to a client right because you want to provide them with the service that they want but yeah. I'm the same Reese had to tell me off he was like you literally said to me earlier tonight that you're really struggling to switch off and just chill out and you're now sat on your phone whilst we're trying to chill out and watch a movie messaging and working he was like give me your phone yeah I was like take it take my watch too because I'm getting <laughs> the notifications <laughs> yeah so it sounds amazing basically and I think it's really cool um so yeah, go and sign up basically, guys. Yeah, go sign up www.limitlessflowposing.com. There you go. We are, we are, I will just say we are ironing out some kinks. So if you have an issue, please directly message me because there are a few things since launching, especially like payments and stuff where, you know, when you launch something like when you went, because we can't test everything because otherwise yeah. I have to pay for everything. Does that make sense as a user? And then I have yeah, to yeah, my yeah. email. So we couldn't test everything. So we tested like one little bit, like a few little bits. And of course, the things that we didn't test have like, they haven't gone wrong, but they're not flowing in the way that they should. So it's not making yeah. it like, it's not making it easy for the client. So if yeah. you are having any issues, please let me know. But they will, they are getting sorted. The tech team are on it. So do not. There's always going to be stuff though, isn't there? There's, if you launch anything new, like there's always going to be like little you always stuff. find stuff. 100%. Um, um, wait, before we move second. on, I want to hear about your prep. How's prep going? We've got a question on this. So we can, uh, let me just, so I've just put all the messages in the group. So one of the questions was, how's your prep going so far, Leah? How's 
Did I send you that one? I swear I got one on that. Yeah, Ellie Bamkin, 94. Oh, it was on them ones. Okay, thank you, Ellie, for the question. Um, Yeah, here we go. How's your prep going so far? Prep is going swimmingly. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah it's all... I feel oh. like I found my groove. You know, I don't know why, but I have, you were probably the same, but I really struggled on my mini cot. I think because I knew it was like six weeks and I was like, don't really need to be doing this. I just really struggled because I was like, we'll probably get out from me if I wanted to and like estimate it, track it. And I just couldn't get my head in it. Whereas this time I'm like, okay, I'm getting on stage, like, and something just switches in your head, doesn't it? It so, really does. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like, yeah, everything's going well. It's I've four, four weeks in now, pretty much. So That's mental. And it's blown, ah. it? Yeah. So I started four weeks ago tomorrow. Um, so I, I only weigh myself once a week, but um yeah, I think I'm down like five pounds now, but I was on my period last week, actually. I was literally just due on my period. Like, I literally started that day when I did my check-in. And my weight still dropped. when that happens. It's such well, a- it still dropped, like, a pound and a half. So I'm quite excited to see tomorrow, because I'm on my period now. So I'm quite excited to see tomorrow what happens, because I do feel, like, a bit... Your mean, upper body, up. you're starting to trim out, like, your... Yeah. You know, like, as women, like, everyone has it. Like, you, 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 you're in your off-season, you're like, I have no doubts. And then you start, your yeah. arm fat starts to go because all of us girls hold fat here. And you, yeah. can, you can even so, see, like, like, yeah, you can see... A little bit. Yeah. Tiny, more. I mean, not massively noticeable, but I feel like it has come through a bit here. Through. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tiny. But, yeah, so I'm quite excited to check in tomorrow because I feel like now I'm off my period. Hopefully things will be a bit better. Water. That's yeah. exciting though. Like I feel like changed been... since the start. Nothing. No, Great. So I had yeah, so I've been in this in then four weeks. So I had two lots so half an hour cardio, just chilling. Um 12k steps on top, which again is fine because I have to walk yeah. the dogs, yeah. And then obviously my food got pulled at the start. But I still feel like I'm eating quite a lot of food. Like I'm a little bit, little bit hungry, but just when I get to the meal, I'm not like sat there thinking, oh my god, I'm starving. Um it's good though. That's a good yeah. thing. Because you don't so want to I'm, be hungry at four weeks into a prep. No, you definitely not. If you're preps twenty two weeks. Yeah, exactly. So I'm I'm feeling at the minute quite like good, and hopefully I'm hoping I can like ring out this first period for as long as possible. Yeah. So that we don't have to add any more cardio room because I'm loving the fact at the minute that I only have to do cardio twice a week. I think you'll enjoy it though when cardio gets bumped up. Yeah, I, I do think, like cardio. I, I just read my book. <laughs> This is it. This is it. Like you just find ways. Like I, I struggle purely based on the fact that I definitely think I'm a bit ADHD. So I struggle to kind of like stay focused and I get bored. And then when I get yeah. bored is when I'm like, so long. Yeah. But I have to like have fu- like three, like, you know, like when you take your kid to, like out for a really long car journey, you have to take like loads of toys and stuff. Yeah. I take my book. Yeah. I take work with me like on my phone. I like yeah. make sure I have work on my phone. And then I also brought my iPad so I could watch Kitchen Nightmares. Cause I just like after yeah. 20 minutes, like I'm like, I'm I'm clocked out and I'm like, right, I'm bored of this book now. To be fair, that does I get to the point in prep where I'm really like fucked and I can't read my book because I can't concentrate on it. So yeah. at that point, like I can't watch YouTube. I have to just listen to music and like stare really see I never got to that point because I have to be stimulated in some sort of way and I feel like because I listen to DMB a lot of it's just bang 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 and I'm like no not today Uh, I listen to like (laughs) I listen to mad stuff when I'm on prep later in cardio (laughs) like you have to do a playlist oh I think I made one actually you know I'm pretty sure I made one last time I prepped and it was like it's like old school just in about high school musical oh and, yeah I listen yeah. to that sometimes too to be fair because you've got to oh. sing along and be happy don't you yeah so you'll have to you'll have to sh- send me the link and I'll pop the uh, link of the play- <laughs> playlist on yeah. the I think I've got it from last time I'll have to have a look um I think I called it like prep vibes or something <laughs> love that love everyone's got that playlist honestly oh, but yeah all going well That's what about exciting. yours what about your post show how's that been since last time so much better handled like so much better handled in comparison to last time like I'm really really happy I won't lie to you like there have been moments where I'm like even though I've handled it better I still could have handled it so much better like I still like people 
you can't help it. Like I feel like I didn't even compare myself when I was in a prep. But I don't know what it is about post show, but you do compare and you do think that people are staring at you if you have gotten softer. When yeah. in reality, like yeah. no one genuinely cares. Yeah. But like I can't help but see people who I competed at the same time with, and I'm like, why are you still lean? Like I'm 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 trimmed, but I'm not lean yeah um so you can't really there are moments not all the time but there are moments where I'm like have I gained still too much weight too quickly even though this is so that this is far better than I was last time and then I'll just sit myself down and go have you bettered your experience this post show than you did last have you have have you gone into a cycle of this is this have you literally devoured 10k almost every day no so you've made progress exactly it's just hard because like mentally it's I don't care seeing my body like this I actually really like my physique like this it's more so when it's like people who saw me lean yeah I completely resonate with that yeah like it's like when and then they look at you and you think oh my god do they think I'm now and do they think that I've eaten like don't get me wrong I'm still eating cookies and cake every night however I'm cutting down on that now like my hunger hormones are starting to like kind of settle now Um, and I've gained so my first week I was so my I was 118 pounds stage weight although that was my leanest I did get to 115 but I was 118 for my last stage weight then I went up to 125 pounds so I gained about three kilo yeah um, which for me was well happy because last time I did it I almost gained like I think I gained like almost six kilo in a week yeah so that's been cut by half and obviously I've got more muscle now so I looked pretty good and then this week this week I've gained uh I'm 130 pounds now so I've you can see that I'm starting to kind of like settle into my into my ways a little bit more yeah five pounds up looking relatively good I obviously look a hell of a lot softer because that's like 10 pounds up but I feel better my training is really good like yeah I'm feeling relatively Mm -hmm. decent it's just it's just shifting your mindset I like how I look like I feel I feel like I look healthy again I feel like I look like me I've got energy you know like my sex drive is back like everything about me is so much better and so much healthier but it is literally when I go to the gym with people who have seen yeah, me. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Although, in a way, right, you, you've you obviously, like, you've regained a bit of body fat back, like, you're feeling better. So you're not now prolonging all those really negative effects of prep for, like, months and months and months after. Like, and obviously, the thing is, right, is you're not just going to gain the body fat and then all the negative effects of prep have gone in like three weeks or whatever. Yeah. It's going to still take time, but you, you're making that easier and shorter by just gaining the body fat and getting yourself, you know, like getting yourself back to being healthy again. So it's yeah, good in a way, because you don't want to prolong that more than necessary, do you? Yeah, it's like a fine line. I feel like we discussed this, like you don't want to stay, you've got to gain body fat post-show, like, you really do, especially for females. Like if you've lost yeah. your period, as women, we're not meant to be, we're not meant to be lean. Like that's not in our nature. Like we're here to bear children. Like that's why we gain so much weight. So like so Sorry. much bigger than men. <laughs> I literally said to Reese, I was like, I hate you so much. Because you, even though obviously he's a lot bigger than me and he was a lot leaner than me, I was like, you've gained the same amount of weight than I have. And you still look, shredded like yeah. you're an absolute twat and I fucking hate you for it but obviously it's gonna happen um but like yeah. it's it's one of those things where it's like you don't want to stay too lean I see some people post show and I'm like you need to eat well that was fucking me last year yeah like you, you you've you got to get your period back girl like no judgment but you yeah. should probably get some body fat on you because you're technically still in the prep yeah, a hundred percent. And I think I sorry, this is diverging completely, but I've been doing a lot of like research and that like, education around like female hormone health and like female cycles. I've been doing a course on it. I've been I see that on your story actually. Yeah, it's been really, really good. Um, I've been listening to like J3 University podcast and I'm doing their course actually with John Dewitt on like female preps, which I'm okay. so excited for. Um, and it's actually I feel like I've 
I've learned so much around like female hormone health and all that sort of thing and it's been like really really interesting so I feel like I'm quite excited because I can sort of apply that now to like clients and like my prep journey as well a bit more Um, so different for women like yeah it's so interesting like I would love to be in like don't get me wrong that really interests me but I'm just not academically interested do you know what I mean like because I can't apply it into a because I'm not a coach because I can't apply it to people I just like flag out yeah yeah you know what I mean I was working with my clients on that which is really cool that's exciting Um, though maybe you can help me but it's like it's one of those things where it's like you don't want to get too fat either so it's like it's just it's a fine line line, but like if you take it too far and you get fat really fat to each post show that is that's some eating that is some eating yeah it's difficult I think it's difficult post show to get fat fat unless you're hugely hugely over consuming day in day out for like weeks like Yeah. yeah you might put on 10 20 25 maybe 30 pounds in the in the few weeks post show yeah. but that's probably just bringing you back to a normal level of body fat you know and I think yeah. actually thinking about it if you're trying to regain your menstrual cycle sometimes you have to actually overshoot your like set body fat point or the the body fat that you were at previously when you had a cycle sometimes you have to overshoot it to get your cycle back and then things sort of stabilize out so you yeah. know I think don't worry if you do gain a bit more body fat if you have to get your period back it's fine like it will find its feet again yeah um, and if it doesn't seek medical advice yeah because obviously there might be underlying thyroid issues like a lot of people female get your blood's done trouble. yeah with like t3 production on prep and that's super important around like your thyroid so that can come up as well so it's definitely worth once you've once you've had give yourself a bit of time post show but once you've had those fukes post show like get your blood done and just check check your thyroid you know check your your hormone level although just remember that's not relevant if you're on contra- hormonal contraception remember you can't yeah. look at your that's exactly why um i'm on the copper coil um yeah. because it's a non-hormonal but i'm yeah. actually getting my bloods done in two weeks time so that would take me up. Cool. maybe yeah. we can talk through them on the podcast this is what i was gonna say i can yeah. kind of talk you through like what i did throughout my prep what supplementations i took leading on to the blood results to then maybe an explanation yeah. just to see kind of what it, it's yeah, that'd be cool. yeah and I can yeah. kind of panel up and stuff which will be quite mm. and I can share the screen too so you guys can like yeah. that'll so be that'll cool. be quite cool so, so post show overall though is going good like you post show like- overall yeah really really happy with how things are going a lot but you, like I said you're just going to have moments where you're just feeling a bit crappy about yourself but just remember yeah. like just remembering that it's completely normal and shifting yeah. your mindset is going to take time and you know not going into the gym and going oh, I look so lean today it's not going to happen like it's it's just you got to shift the mindset get back to training but I am so Tom initially didn't want me to do any cardio but I've actually added in one walk uh, one run per week because I really want to keep my fitness levels up but cool. I can't I don't want to go to a stuffy gym and be on a machine so mm-hmm. I was like right I'll I'll go for a little run really enjoyed that he was like not too happy about it because he was like for someone who's trying to grow their glutes and legs it's not really going to work and I was like yeah but for right now when I'm a bit lighter I was like I'm really enjoying it just mentally it just it enables yeah. me to switch off because I'll go for like a 6 a.m run just for yeah. 20 minutes like it's not long one time per week um, yeah. and then I've also asked him to add like 10 minutes like 10 minutes after an upper session just because I feel like from going to no cardio straight away for me I'm like oh I kind of want yeah. to keep some sort of fitness level especially if I am eating more food mm. and that's got nothing to do with me gaining weight or anything like genuinely like it was last time I was like give me so much more cardio because I'm so fat yeah but no, I just want to keep my fitness levels up like I feel yeah. really good so I don't want to lose that yeah I like keeping a little bit of cardio in and off season not loads but yeah last time I didn't I dropped it all out but generally like I do like keeping just just a session a weekend just so I don't absolutely die on my days this is it this is it so that is what we are doing shall we ask another there's a question on weight gain post show which leads on quite nicely what we've what, what we've just been talking about what is the question it's on the NGL one somewhere um there's quite a few about a reverse actually yeah there is isn't there um it's you find the right one because there's quite a few on 
Okay, so it is, is um, when doing a reverse post show, what would you say is the right in whatever they're called um, yeah. rate of gain? So I wouldn't say there's one. No, I was literally just going to say that it's so personal to you. Like it's some people will prep and they'll just put all the weight on pretty quickly within a month or three weeks. They're pretty much back to the post show pre prep weight again. Some people it might take five, six, seven, eight, even more. And they prefer to do it slowly. So I don't think there is a right way. I think I think there's a right way to approach it in terms of like, obviously, ideally, you don't want to be just eating absolute shit every day. You want to be like being able to get your food up to a good level. But I think as long as you've got your calories up to a really good level, you're eating enough food every day, you're allowing your body to recover. It doesn't really matter about the weight gain because the weight gain is like a side effect of what you're doing post-show. So that's the important bit, like what you do in post-show. It doesn't really yeah. matter what the rate of gain is as long as you're doing the post show bit sensibly and you like getting your food up, you rest in, etc. Yeah, it's it's one of those things as well. Like if it's your first time, like just take each day as it comes. Like that if you go up two pounds, one like your your weight will start to stabilize. Like you may shoot up straight away, but like as your hunger hormones come down, you eat less food in the sense of like shit food um you, you know your body's kind of like now just chilling rather than like just so yeah. spazzed from post-show like it's it's really hard to say because for example I lost a pound from yesterday today just purely based it was a rest day but I still had a cookie so like the rate of rate it doesn't matter like it yeah. really it really has no meaning or such. meaning at all yeah. as long as you're happy as long as you are you know, getting strong at the gym, as long as, you know, you are having some sense of routine, like we said, and I think it was the last podcast. Yeah, go and listen to the last episode. If you've if you've asked anything around post-show, go and listen to the last episode, because yeah. the whole episode was on post-show. Yeah, like, it's, it will keep it brief, but, like, at least have three meals on plan. Like, at least, like, the first three, four meals on plan. And then if you fancy something in the evening, if you're genuinely someone who's really struggling with your cravings, that's probably the best way because it's hybriding the structure and mm. then it's giving you a little bit of leeway. And then, however, it, you will start to just want that full structure back, but it doesn't step you away from completely being erratic and you then struggling to get back into routine. So to answer your question, there is no right way, but as long as you kind of make notes of how you were the first Mm -hmm. first yeah. time you can then get better at it because no yeah. one not even pros are good at post-show because it's it's all hormonal like you can you can be so regimented in your head but there's you're gonna do something or you're not gonna like stick to something at least once twice three times four times it's, yeah it's, we're human at the end of the day yeah I think the best thing you can do post-show is not stress too much about the scale and just focus on getting your food up you know, nice and high straight away. Because the sooner you can do that and stick to your meals and get your calories up, the sooner your hunger is going to settle and you're going to find it easier post-show. So yeah. just get your food up, eat your food, don't miss your meals, stick to your meals and you'll be you'll be fine. Yeah, I agree. Um, Should we do one we more? We go from the start just so we're not missing any. Yeah. Shall we, um, let's do the, let's do the, um, the first NGL because that kind of, leads on nicely to then go back to the yeah. last question the first question back from dove right. so do you implement off-plan meals within your reverse diet post-show i um, do yeah i do so yeah like i currently have been having so i had the launch meal and then i had father's day so i've planned social events um to kind of have meals out but also I would probably say I'm having like two meals out per week, um, which which for me is more so so I can get my social life back. My yeah. like I can, you know, just enjoy myself a bit, have the food that I want. But having like a set, right, you can only have two or one or for example, kind of helps in the sense that you look forward to it. Mm, yeah, and it gives you structure again. Because I'm I, I only have so when I'm post show, I have I have one uh off sometimes I get a bit funny right about calling it off plan and like I I, I would never call it a cheat meal but sometimes because you know because I work with a lot of lifestyle clients obviously right, yeah they're very like I've just got in a habit of like not calling it an off plan meal because I would never it? say that 
Well, I just, a for meal. me, I would call it an off-plan meal. But if I was talking to a client, I would just say, go and have a meal of choice or a meal out. So I think I've like conditioned myself not to call it an off-plan meal. I do understand, um, I do understand like that terminology, like yeah. it's scary because it's not on plan and you're going off plan. But it's, I feel like we should normalise wanting to go off plan because at the end of the day, not everyone should live on the same eat the same food at the same time like you yeah. should have so like even if it is off plan you have a fucking life guys just 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 remember that like me and Leah in our first couple of episodes spoke about how balanced we are mm-hmm. you're literally chill out like it's not the end of the day just it's an off plan meal cool you're eating off plan whatever who gives yeah. a as long as you understand the repercussions or not even repercussions, as long as you understand the outcome of you eating what you're eating, do what the fuck you want. If yeah. it, when I, do you know? When I'm not dieting, like if I'm not on prep and I'm just in off season and Will says, oh, should we go out for dinner? I'm like, yep. Like I don't, if it's, I'll tell you what, what I do and I do this in my reverse diet as well, but I basically have one like off plan meal a week when I'm reversing post-show yeah where I will just have what I want. So that tends to be the more calorie dense food. So if I want to have a takeaway, if I want to have a pizza, if I want to go out with Will and we'll get like dessert and have a couple of drinks, I'll do that. If I end up going out for a meal on another occasion, so like a family meal or I go out with my friends, I'll choose something more sensible. Yeah. That I can yeah. Just swap a meal for, because what I'll then do, say if I'm going out for dinner and it's an, a second meal a week, um, say if I have steak and potatoes and veg for my like last meal of the day or my fifth meal of the day or whatever, I'll just go out and I'll just make sure it's got some protein in, it's got some carbs in and it's maybe got some veg in. So I'll have like a chicken pasta or I might even just get a steak and get some chips on the side. So it's not like miles off what I would normally have because I exactly think- what I've been doing, like with yeah. my meals. A it works because it, it just yeah. stopped them. Yeah. And also it helps because you're eating out so you're thinking oh I'm having something that's not on yeah. plan like I'm I'm relaxing a little bit like for example like me and Reese go for a burrito sometimes or we'll go Nando's like Nando's yeah, I'll exactly. class as an off plan meal yeah. um and then we'll go for like something fat like we'll go for some like fat yeah. you know that's like that's like yeah it's like good like just hits the spot yeah just cheesy just cheesy pizza or something. yeah oh just like cheese yeah. crust cookie cookie the cookies from Domino's. oh they're banging now they're me and oh them. but i think that works because it also gets you into the habit of not using every single time you eat out as an opportunity to just get the like most calorie dense thing off the menu like you don't have to have a dessert every time you go out you don't have to have the burger and the chips so i think that gets you into a really good routine as well of like being oh i can go out and i can have steak and potatoes or i can have like a tomato based pasta dish or I can have like the fish and the veggies when I go out enjoy it's... yourself like yeah. that's it like you don't have to say no because you're only allowed once a day just make better choices yeah. you know like build those habits again like it's, it's it's like most places now do have a lot healthier things on the on their yeah. bill because everyone in like everyone in the world at the moment especially the UK is on this fitness regime and mm also menus have to have calories on them now so if something's like a thousand calories that's going to steer someone away yeah a hundred percent and I also think as well that um what's it gonna say oh my god you know when you're just about to say something your brain just goes you also think that because I said about thousand calories is it gone oh yeah I was gonna say like I went on holiday really close post show last year and I didn't track any of my food you know I was just sensible like I didn't have croissants and french toast for breakfast every day I didn't have pizza for dinner every night I had like fish and veggies or I had like an omelette for breakfast and some fruit and a slice of toast you know or I had like grilled fish and meat and fruit for lunch you know I just and I came back and I I mean this is obviously very this is how I did it but I don't think I gained well I didn't gain any weight on that holiday so it can you know what I mean? You can go and out. yourself, yeah. yeah without just, because I think that's where a lot of people struggle. They think, ah, oh, if, if I ever go out, like I have to go all in on that meal, but you can I still am very out. much to that scale. I have, I've, I've, I've been better at it, but I am one of those people who's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, if I'm, if I'm out, I'm out. Like, yeah. yeah, I might as well. But I have gotten better at it. But yeah. I am like a, I am, I used to be at that extreme where it's like anytime I go out, well, I'm out now. 
I might as well treat myself. I used to be like that. That's literally what I used to do. Yeah. Um, but I just think if you are post-show and you've only got one off-plan meal a week, like you can probably still go out more than once. Yeah. But just be sensible, basically. Yeah. Like go to like a go to even like an Indian's quite good. Like you get like yeah. you know, that kind of like there's so many different types of food like that you can have, like noodle bars and like sushi, like it doesn't have to be like a Domino's takeaway or a Mackey D's mm. or a KFC. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, all. even like pubs, right? You can get like even pie and mash. Like that's yeah. actually pretty good. Like it's gonna have a bit more fat, but it's like not gonna be ridiculously overpowering in comparison to a two thousand five hundred calorie pizza. Yeah, or even like you can get they all have fish and meat and stuff at the at the that sort of stuff, you know. So yeah. I think it's just. Yeah. okay next question do you want to ask do you want to do that first one so we don't miss it so what would be okay. your advice on getting comfortable practicing posing in the gym so first things first I think the reason why people aren't comfortable with posing in the gym is because they don't know how to pose so your first port of call I would personally say is get yourself on the community site where you have the online tutorials or get yourself an opposing uh, opposing coach just have a session like at least one session just because a lot of people don't want to do it because they feel silly right they don't feel like they're doing it right and they feel judged yeah, um, yeah. if you just start even if that's one session even though you're two years out that's one session that's just starting you on that journey so you feel comfortable <clears throat> that you're doing it right yeah. or not doing like completely wrong poses that will start build that will already start building you on your confidence and then I think the other thing is just like just getting in the understanding that genuinely no one cares what you do at the yeah. gym like yeah. they might look at you because you're bringing heel sparkly heels out but they're not gonna go what the fuck is she doing yeah. I can't believe that why would <laughs> anyone, dare like how dare like they might think that's really inconvenient she's in my way and I need that dumbbell yeah. But yeah. like nine times out of ten, they just don't care. Like, but it, I, it is hard because it's just a confidence. It's but if you get good at something, you're gonna you're gonna show it off. Yeah. Like it, it's just how it is. So you just need to start the journey of learning how to pose. And it, yeah. I don't expect people to be able to pose in a gym as soon as they've had a session with me. But I do try and push them to go to certain things like group posing sessions or pose. Yeah friends or pose in front of their family and friends and then work their way up to the gym because I know that can be very overwhelming yes. sometimes it is for me still yeah same yeah. like I, I I to be fair I think just bear in mind as well if you go into a commercial gym like a pure a JD and you're in the gym you probably are going to get some funny looks because yeah. you're around people that don't have a clue what bodybuilding and competing yeah. are whereas if you go to a bodybuilding bodybuilding gym where there's a lot of people that do compete you're not going to get a second glance because yeah. people know about posing. People understand about heels. Even if you're not. in your kini, they're not going to care. Yeah, like the gyms I go to, there's people posing in there, filming themselves every time I go in. There's a posing studio upstairs. Like, people yeah. get it. So I think just just bear in mind, like, I don't know if I would pose in the middle of a com commercial gym, being completely honest. I think I would go into, like, the studio room. But I don't know if I went into, a like, a pure gym when it was, like, peak busyness, like, I don't think I would feel comfortable posing in the no, middle of a I wouldn't. Gym. I would situate myself in the studio, but yeah. that's purely based on the fact I don't want to be also an inconvenience to anyone. Yeah. But if yeah. you, if I had to, I would do it. I would just go, well, fuck it. Like, I don't care what these people think of me. They can go fuck themselves if they don't like me at the end of the day. I'm not, I'm, I think I'm at that mindset where I'm like, why should your opinion matter to me when I don't even know who you are? Like, if yeah. you don't like me or like what I'm doing, I don't want to be your friend, so I just don't care. Judge me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but see, I'm not quite at that level, I don't think, with it. Um, it's all about building your confidence. This is what I yeah. say to my clients. I was like, I don't expect you to feel confident straight away. I don't expect you to even want to show anyone these videos. Just, just start to build your confidence because, remember if you can't do it in front of I always think it is harder doing it in front of people you know because yeah. they're going to be honest with you 
But like, if you can't do it in front of your friends and family, what makes you think you can do it in front of hundreds of people on show day? So you do yeah. need to start building it up and maybe just have cert, like achieve another goal each month. And this is why I say start posing early because you'll get more confident with it as time goes on. Yeah, you just need to take your time and build it up. And don't, don't like tonight, said, don't just have a session and go and pose in the gym. Like maybe have a few sessions, have five or six sessions, and then maybe go into the studio at the gym and practice. And then maybe do a group posing session and then maybe do a bit in front of your friends and family. And you'll get to the point where you're like, oh yeah, I'm pretty good at this now. And you're like, you'll be okay. Because if you know yeah. you're good at something, your confidence is going to be higher with it, right? So I think it's just building that confidence up. I agree. I agree. Just don't expect to run before you can walk is basically what we're trying to say as well. Yeah, and po- oh, God, sorry. Posing's hard. It takes time, right? Like I was shit at posing when I started. It took me Wait, so was time. I. So was I. And people are always like, yeah, I can't imagine that. I'm like, yeah, because I was fucking donkeys ago. Like I worked my way up to this point and you can too. I've got four, four, almost five years worth of experience of posing. So of course, if I'm not good at it by this point, I'd be pretty worried. <laughs> yeah 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 next question next question um won't do any more about reverse tips or do you know anything about postpartum a little bit yeah okay I don't let you answer this question um tips for building muscle postpartum and getting back to training okay so I think the first thing with this is um, it's very individual because if you are someone that has had a C-section, for example, your abdominal wall has been cut. So your muscle has been cut. So obviously you're not going to go into the gym being able to do lifts that require you need to like brace really hard for a good few weeks. Um, so it really depends on like your circumstance. If, for example, you've had to been like cut down there, obviously you're not going to be able to just walk into the gym and do a squat and like expect to be okay. So I think oh my you God, imagine what would come out of that. Oh God, honestly, it terrifies me. But I think your circumstances are very, very specific to you. There's not like a set time, but I think it's just about building it back up slowly. So, you know, I think again, if you've had a C-section, obviously you need to be in avoidance of doing any core work. So it's very specific as to like, yeah, that's what- hard because you brace on every movement. Yeah exactly so you need to be really careful so I would say if you're starting to go back obviously get your steps up first you know there's there's actually a physio that I know um of um god what's her Instagram she's called um now I think she's called the female physio or something like that on Instagram um I've met her before and she works specifically with women on like pelvic floor because obviously once you've given birth your pelvic floor muscles are like not great so you have to retrain yourself to like like tensing of vagina yeah yeah so like if you sit there now everyone I literally it. just did it <laughs> yeah I did as well right, if you everyone there, just tense your vaginas three two one tense <laughs> three two one yeah but you can do it right and I think after you've given birth it's really hard so you start squatting and you're like basically pissing yourself so yeah because you can't control the muscles so you have to retrain your pelvic floor up so I think go and work with a specific physio or a coach that can help you build in some of those basic exercises before you start going back into the gym. Cause you can do those at home probably a few weeks after you've given birth. So, you know, start building your activity back up, get your steps up, maybe something gentle like Pilates or whatever, um, do the kind of pelvic floor exercises and then get yourself back in the gym. Like as long as you're recovered, like you could go in and just start off steady. So start off with your machine based stuff. So stuff that doesn't require you to like really brace. So leg extension, leg curl, shoulder press machine, lap pull down, start with your machines before you go on to anything like a deadlift or a squat or a leg press where you yeah. really have to like engage. So, and just start light, right? Like strip your weight back. Don't go to failure, focus on your form, focus on your tempo, build it up. And, and you just need to take it really, really slowly. Cause obviously, you know, some people might be fine and it might only take them two or three weeks. Some people, it might be two, three, four months before they can train normally again. I think it's so dependent on your situation, but I think it's definitely worth going and speaking with a, a physio or someone that is well equipped to deal with how can you actually build those muscles back up, especially if you've been caught or you've had a C-section that's it that's a good insight that's a really good insight I couldn't uh, I wouldn't even wouldn't have been be, even been able to advance that I would have gone um I don't know just take your time basically just 
whatever you, I feel like for women as well, like we're quite in tune with our body. So if something doesn't feel right, stop. If you don't feel ready, don't go. Don't apply mm-hmm. any pressure on a timeline. Just think, right, I feel like I'm ready to step into that gym now. I feel like that's yeah. one thing Like people think that women who have just given birth are going to bounce back or have to have a flat stomach like four weeks post post show post uh post yeah yeah um so it's all it's just all about kind of taking your time getting yourself back to normal first your mental state Mm -hmm. get into a routine with your baby have fun with your baby and then focus on yourself when when you feel ready to but don't leave it too late though because if you leave it too late you, you're already out of the routine for so long that it'll be hard to get back into it but also don't apply any pressure to yourself is what I'm trying to say <laughs> I think as well just bear in mind if you have been strength training before and through your childbirth then you're probably going to be able to come back a lot easier than a lot someone quicker. who's never trained before and has no yeah. training experience so like I know I know women that have trained really well like right up to the week or two before they were pregnant and that's something like if you'd start training before you're pregnant if you're already training like you can obviously there's going to be maybe elements of morning sickness and stuff and there's things you can't do when you when you're pregnant but um you can train all the way through pregnancy pretty much yeah as your body I've seen I've, I've seen loads of people do it they obviously these training styles just change yeah you, you just can't you can't do anything when you lay on your back basically um and obviously you can't do core work but that's about it yeah like it's it's and also like to failure and stuff I feel like you're not are you actually able to train to like p- you true train failure? pretty hard yeah and unless you're like really close I mean I would probably back off a bit closer to maybe six weeks or so like pre judo wow I had no idea you consider is you get slightly more flexible to obviously help out the childbirth so you have to bear in mind that it's easier to pull things and stuff like that when you're pregnant because um everything's a bit yeah because it helps with the it's like a muscle relaxant so wow then, I'm learning so yeah. much that's incredible that's I didn't think cool. I knew much <laughs> no that like for someone who genuinely knows nothing that's a lot to take in oh okay that's really cool I need to start oh well not start because I'm not trying to have a kid right now but like I I feel like that's definitely a topic that's not educated enough or women aren't educated enough in and then they get pregnant and then have to educate themselves so I feel like you yeah, should well, be eventually, I think eventually I want to do a little bit of work around that like obviously when I'm a bit later in life yeah. but that would be cool bodybuilding well, in me, yeah, if uh, you're still coaching and like by the time I'm 28, Reese is 31, you can coach me. <laughs> I find it really cool. Like I would love at some point to work with women who are like maybe wanting to get pregnant and they want to like get really healthy and, you know, support the childbirth and the post like. That would be such a cool niche. Like that would be such a cool niche. Like if you were to get like really good and be like one of the top coaches who deal with women pre-pregnancy during pregnancy and post-pregnancy I feel like there really isn't actually anyone that I have heard of maybe there's like a few but like that that would be really beneficial to women and I feel like if you were to obviously have the like incredible amount of knowledge and really push that with advertisement I feel like you'll be surprised with how many women actually want that yeah, because you need nutrition support, like mental well-being. You can cover everything, which would be so cool. So that's like a future. That's goal. cool. That's really cool. That's really cool. Right. Sorry, diverged on that question. No, um, no, that's, I feel like a lot of people, we have a lot of women. I think there's like one man who listens to this podcast. But like, I feel like the women now think about, think about that if you are thinking about having kids at some point. So the next question mm-hmm. What's the cost Should of the... eating? That one. Oh, sorry. No, no. Which one did you want to do? The one I was going to go on to the P. We can do that one. What's the competing one's fine. Let's do that first. What's the cost? What's of... the cost of competing? <laughs> oh my god! You are. You are. You are. <laughs> What's the cost of competing? I'll be a first time and the only thing stopping me is not knowing the cost of everything. I swear you did a YouTube video on this. I did do a YouTube video on this. Um, I also did work out because I did, I'm doing um doing a live on something like this. And it really depends. You can make it as cheap or as expensive as you want. You could probably do a prep, probably. 
you need at least a grand in your bank because there's certain things that you can do right you can rent a bikini that will cost 125 quid you know you can do your own makeup you can do your own hair like if you are good at those things you can save so much money but if you're someone like me who genuinely doesn't want any stress doesn't want anything going wrong um I would personally I don't know I'd probably rent a bikini but if they didn't have my color I'd have to buy a bikini so like most I'd probably say if you're still competing in the UK and let's say two shows average I would say you probably need like if you're paying someone to do something for you your hair your makeup your coaching all that kind of stuff anything that's if we class it on anything on top of what you would already be spending for a prep uh, for an off season you probably only need like two mm-hmm. you probably need like a grand minimum and then like two and a half three grand maximum I think you need a good couple of grand if you look, yeah, if you're looking at the whole prep, the coaching. But no, but um, what I mean is like, if you don't include that in the sense of like, right, you had an off season, you've had an off season with your coach, that's part of your like bills. You've already equated that in, you've already equated 60 pound of a food shop. You've already equated in all of that. And then you add money on. So what you would be paying extra for prep. I could, I actually reckon you could do it on a thousand pounds, but it'd be very budget line. Yeah, I think you can actually do it quite cheap. Like if yeah. you just have to be very clever. Happy. Like you can, yeah, you can borrow bikinis, you can rent bikinis off people. Like one of my friends, I lent my show bikini to. Yeah. You know, like you can do your you own can, makeup. Yeah, you can straighten your hair. I didn't pay for my hair. I just straightened my hair. No, day. I'm literally saying I literally just straighten my hair or curl it myself. I literally practice. I think so many times when I curled my hair just to make sure it was good. Never pay anyone for my hair. You can literally get false nails that stick on that cost you a fiver like the only thing that I would probably recommend paying for is your makeup 100% Um, and that's going to cost you like 70 quid cool but you're saving money on your nails your hair your bikini uh, yeah and it also depends on what federations you compete for if you're going to two bros save an extra hundred quid (laughs) save a lot of money Uh, but I think you don't want to scrim on your coach because no investing into your off season before you prep so the best way I think to do it is put a bit of money away every month so say if you put 100 quid away a month for a year before you were prepping you could do it on that you could do it on that and then you're not having to sorry my whatsapp is going mad um and then you're not having to like scrimp and save and find like over a grand out of anywhere because because remember how many shows you do as well like if you are doing different federations you have to join up and you have to pay the membership, then you have to enter the show, and then you want stage photography, and then if you go in and travel in, you need to pay for the hotel. So you could do that, you know, you could do all your shows in the same federation, and yeah. you could only do one show, and you could choose a show that's neat so you don't have to stay in a hotel. Yeah. So there are ways, but I yeah. think... It's, I think it, You can make it as cheap or as expensive as you want. It's, 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 it's one of those as well, like in terms of your coach as well you should you shouldn't just get a prep coach just because you've decided to prep yeah. you should you should be with your coach at least 12 months before you even decide to compete just purely based on the fact you want to go through a diet phase with them and an off-season phase and preferably two off-season phases in the sense where you I don't know some people some coaches most coaches diet a lot of people first when they sign up to then build up yeah. from that um but you at least want to go through a few phases so your coach can get used to you and they can yeah, I agree. but like generally like it really does just depend and yeah I would say minimum actually I'm going to up it to like 1500 just in case you do have to like travel and get like a hotel but again ways of skimping find someone who may be competing in the same show as you and share a hotel yeah do you know what I mean like it's it's there's so many ways so many there are and save money so it's for me this prep I think cost me about three and a half grand I won't lie yeah but that's it can be expensive can't it but that's because I went internationally as well so yeah I think like the first time I competed it definitely cost a lot more than what I initially thought it would but then you learn you know you learn kind of how much certain things cost and and you kind of get a bit better at your budgeting yeah 100 yeah, percent um yeah so next question where is it um do you both use pds during off season or just in a prep don't answer first 
or shall yeah, I? Yeah, I'll go first. So I've never really spoken about this before because I'm very, very wary that I coach a lot of lifestyle clients and people that don't understand about PD usage and drug usage and bodybuilding. So I'm very wary of just spouting it out on like my Instagram because obviously I have a lot of like people that don't bodybuild. The audience also... isn't there, is it? No, exactly. But um, obviously like bodybuilding is a sport at the end of the day, right? It's an extreme sport and I compete in, a te- in an untested federation. Mm. Why a fairly muscular category. So mm. I, I have taken peds in my prep um but not in, i haven't taken anything in an off season before oh right okay fair enough i just want to point out because i think some people will look at people that compete and think oh my god they only look like that because they take xyz whereas like if i look at what i've taken pretty much all my muscle has been built like naturally be careful saying that because people are going, you're not natural because you take Yeah, yeah. But I get but, like, I yeah, get yeah, yeah, yeah. But in my off season, like I haven't taken anything. So I'm a very, very aware that obviously if you have an assistance through a prep, like there's potential to still build muscle through a prep if you're obviously assisted. Yeah. Um, but I haven't taken anything in, in my off season. And also I I talk the, the the I know obviously I speak to people about this, but the amount that I take as well is very minimal, and I only take one to two things, so it's not like I'm smashing loads and loads yeah. of loads of stuff. Day, like at the end of the day, I feel like how do I explain it? There's like certain levels to PED usage, guys. Like, don't think that like oh my god you've taken pds why do you not look like this or this is going to happen to you or this is going to happen to you like if you are with the right coach or if you have put the information in for yourself and all that kind of stuff I feel like one thing that you really have to pay attention to and the questions you have to ask if you are looking towards that kind of aspect is have you been training long enough have you um do you actually want to what what's your kind of like long-term goal with bodybuilding and is it realistic can you do it whilst you're natural um have you put the have you put the education or the time into thinking is this actually for you is it worth yes. it are you happy with the long term effects um what is it that you want to get out of it and also kind of figure out what actually what you actually want to do with it so for example i am not um, natural i have taken pds in my off season and in my prep however similarly to you they are very short stints and they are very, very, very minimal. And a lot of it is just to kind of like, let's say if we're doing like a delt block or let's say we're doing like a gluten hamstring block because they're areas that I need to improve upon. Would like It's, it's, it's very difficult because it's like so minimal, but because I haven't exposed yeah. myself to a lot of drugs already, I don't need to go above that. So yeah. it's very similar, like mainly, mainly I am going to do the same thing as you I don't actually want to use any PDs now in an off season because I don't feel like it's necessary for me um which I've learned which I've gone I've tried it and I've gone well actually like do I really need to absolutely not do I want Uh, long-term effects from being kind of exposed to PDs for a long period of time no I don't do I just need to take more time yes I do um but at the end of the day a lot of people who do compete in untested federations will most definitely some people not all of them um most people will just do it in a prep because it is a lot of PDs have like an aesthetic aspect to the look which is what untested federations look more towards so like I said it depends on what you want to do long term with bodybuilding if this is just something that like you're just doing for fun don't fucking do it if you've literally trained for a year don't fucking do it but if you have like goals like similarly to me and Leah and you really thought about everything like it's it's very normal in the sense where it's like, it's, I say normal, I really don't like saying that, but it, a lot more people do it than you'll realise. And you probably yeah, can't even definitely. tell by me and Leah that we that we have ever yeah. done it because we are very cautious and careful and have an understanding of where the fine line is between what we're willing to do to our bodies. A yeah. hundred percent. And there's a very like, I... I've done a lot of research into it. I've educated myself a lot on it. So I understand the potential repercussions of it. And there's certain things that I would and wouldn't do. Yeah. Because you're like, nah. I'm not willing to sacrifice certain things to look a certain way. Yeah. And I think that's where 
you have to think about what you want because like I'm not one of these people that's like yeah anything for bodybuilding no I'm not <laughs> very very much want to stay feminine and yeah. um as soon as something happens during a, like let's say during a stint of where I'm on and I'm like oh even if it's like the tiniest little inkling I'm like right that's it we need to stop this doesn't work for me or this this does a lot of the things that people also don't realize it is trial and error because let's say for example Leah was taking the same amount as I was at exact same time exact same phase she might get absolutely zero virilization however I might get absolutely loads of different virilization like massive hair loss like growth um exactly. lowered voice um so it is person dependent as well so we're not we're not kind of promoting it but if if that is something that obviously you have thought about make sure you seek someone specifically and I mean this please because I've heard it to I've heard it from people very close to me where their coach will tell them something's a moderate dose when it's actually a moderate dose for a male not a female it's a massive difference so make sure that that your coach knows Uh that you're female and that it's very different for a male and that they have I don't be anyone's guinea pig that's what I'm going to say. Don't be yeah. anyone guinea pig if you care about your health because it's not worth it. Yeah. And just bear in mind as well, obviously, you've got your androgens, which is like your male hormones, basically. Yeah. And so you can, you can take assistance without taking an androgen. So yeah. you just look into that and make sure you're aware of what you're taking and potential side effects of that particular drug that you are thinking so about. Broad. And I really don't want to educate because I really don't want to promote it because if you don't if you don't like I only do it because I want to get at a high level of bodybuilding but if I just love training and wanted to look good or wanted to look like or if let's say for example I thought right I have 20 years in this sport I probably wouldn't do it but because I know I kind of want to achieve everything at a certain amount of time I'm not rushing but I'm like realistically to get where yeah. I want to be am I going to have to do it unfortunately that's the way the sport has gone yeah and sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to accept that and go, right, I actually really, really want to do well in this. And yeah. naturally, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get there. So I have to make the decision. Do I just cho- change my goal or do I try with where I'm happy? And you know what? If it doesn't happen and I've still done it, I've done everything that I'm happy to do. And I'm fine with reaching that type of potential there. Yeah. I'm happy to stop there. I'm not willing to yeah. do it more than that. Yeah, and also it people think, oh my god, that's why they look that way because they're on they're taking PEDs, but it's literally a little a little sprinkling on top of the cake. It's not yeah, you've got to have it your doesn't transform you to have your training. Like people think yeah. oh, drugs, oh my god, I'm gonna be like so hench and so blah blah and lean and just yeah. so big. No, you funnily enough to build muscle, your nutrition has to be that's good, right. your training has to be good, your yeah. recovery has to be good. If those three aspects aren't good. And you're also taking yeah. assistance. You're probably not going to look that much different. You'll probably look a tiny yeah. bit different, but not really. Yeah. And like, for example, my whole first prep was completely natural. The When I did my qualifier, you know, the year I won the British, mm-hmm. the tone figure in 2021, the year before last, I all up to my qualifier, I was natural. So I only, <clears throat> the first time I ever took something was just, I think it was five weeks it wasn't it wasn't even leading right when I it was at some point towards the prep for the British yeah. but I actually didn't take we came off everything like leading into that show so then when I say like yes I've, I've taken PDs it's literally then the regardless, regardless you've exposed yourself now uh like in the terms of like the PDs and yeah. unfortunately even if like even if you take like one tablet of I don't know clenbuterol or like whatever it may yeah. be, you can't now compete in a natural federation. Like that, as yeah. soon as you expose well, yourself, you yeah. can't. Like you just can't, and that's the unfortunate. Part. So that's why you've got to think right. There's so many people who will go on PDs, realize it's not for them, and then they have to compete yeah. in untested federations against. Don't get me wrong, people like Meg fucking lifts can't remember her actual her surname who won fucking you we all know Meg come on she's natural yeah, yeah. there's certain people who are genuine freaks and don't have to 
take it but just, it's just your genetic potential and yeah. a lot of people will take PDs realize it's not for them but now can't compete in natural federations so it's like really kind of making that decision of like right yeah but <laughs> women it's- at it, you like as well because like I liked PCA I knew I wanted to do PCA I knew that I didn't like the posing in the like yeah. for example the UK DFBA shows so I knew I wanted to go into PCA yeah so yeah. for me I was like well I want to do athletic fitness. Yeah, so I've got to I've got to weigh out my options and then we'll talk mm-hmm. about it. And the good thing is, is we're both with coaches who have an extreme amount of knowledge on it and respect yeah. our choices on where how far we want to take it. Yeah, exactly. But just if you are, you know, if you are thinking about it, like do your research as well. Make sure you are educated on it and also be aware that it doesn't, it's not a game changer yeah yeah it's not like a it's not like a fucking magic pill like guys chill out yeah. <laughs> so that's actually answered one of the questions that says can you talk a bit more about whether your journeys have been enhanced so we've done that question yeah um the, like. what's your dream house how tall are you is there an, is there one more good one that we can finish on where are your parents from oh, when is and i moving in with reese you know what um, I'm not actually moving in with Reese this year. Me and Beth are moving in together. However, I pretty much I feel like since prep, I feel like I've pretty much been living with him because I've just been at his house. You know, like because we just have more free time. We have like we've just wanted to. I feel like because we've been so even though we've spent time together, we've been so distant because yeah. of that, we've been so self focused that even if we were together, we weren't like really together. Um. So I've, I've literally been, I've, I've, I think I've spent like maybe three days at home since being back from Alicante, which I'm really not complaining about because I really do enjoy it. Um, But we are, we've actually had a bed delivered um, a bed delivered today for our new house um, when we yeah. went next year in July. Because um, Reese needed one. We were like, right, let's choose one we both like because we're, we're not going to spend another couple grand on a bed like yeah. if you've only had it for a year. So we're hoping at some point, sometime at summer next year we're going to rent for the first year because we just kind of want to get into the grips of living in together we don't want to relocate next year we would quite like to stay relatively with my dad being ill and everything I really don't want to move any further up north and that's where we would probably want to relocate so the next couple of years we're probably just going to stay rent here and then when we actually figure out a destination of where we want to like relocate to that's when we'll be buying a house so hopefully fingers crossed next year because at that point we would have been together like three and a half years which I think is a really good time to kind of have a good developed relationship spent enough time away from each other and found like found that kind of found ourselves because I feel like people think oh yeah you're into a relationship you know you're strong no like I feel like I've still got so much to learn I feel like I'm almost like getting there but I feel like yeah it's taken only up until two years to actually learn about loads like more about Reese I don't know if you're the same with Will like but it was different for me because I already knew Will from uni so we, we our relationship was very very fast because we already right. were friends and we already knew a lot but about you him. still had that relationship prior yeah. correct yeah, we I've known Will for like coming up 10 years now exactly so yeah. it's I, I for me personally I couldn't move in with someone so early into relationship because I find it really difficult to understand their habits and and accept that yeah yeah I get you yeah not long I feel like those are all the good questions the other ones are like how tall are you and it's just like well I'm I'm 164 centimeters we're pretty much the same I'm 163 and a half oh yeah you're you're a little bit smaller than me aren't you on that weird border in PCA where you might get the tall but you can't you are in the short but they try and put you in the tall <laughs> yeah I got put into the tall and you didn't I did nearly I was well oh, yeah, I, and I was literally having a meltdown on stage and I just walked on <laughs> in <front. laughs> oh, I'm going on now and I just I on. remember this oh my god I remember this from on the other podcast I was like, I haven't had it, I haven't <laughs> right I am bursting for a week so this is probably a good time to finish off because we finished all the good questions is there anything else you wanted to say no I think that's it really well guys thank you so much for um oh oh, we forgot to ask the one question that I got we'll answer that for the next one because we could definitely do like a topic on like what is it what is the question 
um about weight caps with wellness and stuff okay well we'll start on that next time yeah we can start on that because i am gonna wee myself so guys thank you so much (laughs) for listening uh if you aren't already please follow us and also tag us when you are watching these um it's really good to see people kind of like seeing what you're doing whilst listening to us which is really cool so yeah thank you so much guys for listening thanks guys